Marcus Conti reporting. Ah, breathe deep. Despite your broken rib. Ah. So I want to talk about um I'll talk about a few things, but I want to talk mostly about the uh the yellow vest revolution. <laughs> you saw that shit, right? The French? French are on the move. What does it all mean? I don't know. Actually, I do. Well, I think I do anyway. But first, the story. <laughs> Marcus Conti reporting. So to understand what's going on, right, in France, there's a revolution going on, right? But in France, there's also a long history of uh, peaceful people coming to the square and protesting. Not unusual. Whenever something goes wrong in France, France like, oh, fucking, and they head out to the plaza and they protest, right? But now they're being greeted by what? The militarized, militarized police. But before I, t I talk about that, I think it's important to understand a few things. I had a realization about age. Because I noticed that um, of the you know, few thousand people that watch this, that the common demographic is uh, people in their 40s. That's the most common demographic, right? And the millennial crowd is somewhat absent in this series. And I could tell you why. Because what do I talk about? I talk about the vast levels of income and wealth inequality. And I talk about... I talk about a time when that wasn't the case in America, right? The 60s, the 70s, where, you know, when I was a kid, right? I would, we had parties in the yard, you know, and there were, there were kids would, you know, people would bring their kids and the kids would play out in the yard. There'd be a barbecue and a pool and kids would go ride their bikes and this, this would go on all day and sometimes into the night, into the next day, right? People would get to know each other, family. Oh, hey, it's my cousin. Oh, it's my friend down the block. Hey, fucking everybody knows each other, right? They had time. And what did a father do? What did, my grandfather, I don't know, he, was a, he worked in a shoe factory. He made, uh, he made shoes, and then he spent, and my grandmother too, and they, they, they worked in shoe factories, and then, and then they had, they, my, the point is that they, they had regular jobs. They were working people, blue class working people, blue class, blue, blue collar, excuse me. And they were able to own a house and a yard, and, right? and here's the problem, right? The younger people today, and then... The, the biggest part of that story is that I'm old enough to, to have seen it disappear where that's not possible anymore because all the people at that table when I was a kid are now working two jobs, three jobs, five jobs. They don't have money. They're in debt. They can't take a Saturday off. They can't, you know, the kids don't even know who they are anymore, right? Because the income and wealth inequality has has widened and people my age remember a time when it wasn't the case and the young people unfortunately have no reference so they don't understand what you're talking about it's like it's normal oh yeah sure there's billionaires there's people with 3,000 times the wealth of me and that's normal <laughs> right there's millions of people with Billions of dollars. I'm going to talk about that too. What exactly the... But let's, you know, income and wealth inequality. What a billion dollars actually is. 
I could feed football fields full of human beings. Right? And people say, well, where are you going to get the money to pay for single-payer health care? <laughs> and also, I want you in this discussion, you, uh, I, want you, I want everybody to put away, for just a second, Professor Conti would like you to put away all of your terminology. No capitalist, no socialist, no communist, no, no uh, uh, populist, no evangelist, no right wing, no left wing. You know, none of those. None of those things for just a minute, for just a few minutes while you watch this. Don't use those words because those are the words that are holding us back, the terms, right? Oligarchy loves that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, fucking communist. Oh, fucking, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're populist. Lock them up. <laughs> so put all your terminology away. We're Americans. We're the 99%. All right, so what's going on in France is you've got these yellow vests. The yellow vests, right? They're, they're rebelling, right? Because the fuel prices started it. Right? And it's spreading now to uh, Belgium. And now you're seeing the Brexit people start to wake up and take action, right? But is it really about fuel prices? Is it really about the price of bread? As it was in the French Revolution? Yes and no. It's about price. And being priced out. That's what it's about. So what you're seeing there is just... Is, is really just income and wealth inequality again, right? That's what you're seeing. What does it mean? Huh? What does it mean? What is it? Well, we know what it means. It it means that despite all of the all of the unionization and all the politis, politica, political you know politicians that nobody is effective anymore at fighting the one percent. They've become impotent fools in the fight. And it's the people, again, that have to lead the fight. Now I know, I know, fucking Bernie Sanders, they yeah, like that jerk off, that guy, old fucking jerk off, right? But what did Bernie Sanders say? What did Bernie Sanders say? I don't know, he's just some old politician, right? I don't know, guy, I don't know what he's talking about. Change always happens from the bottom up and never from the top down. Hmm. From the bottom up. What does that mean? In other words, you don't sit around waiting for the politicians to secretly make a move and bring down the house. No. It's the people from the bottom that do it. And that essentially was the 2016 surge from the left that the oligarchy stopped successfully by cheating and appointing Hillary Clinton as the uh, flag bearer for progressives, right? By cheating. That's how they stopped. See, there's 40 million people in America that know it. Right? They know it. So, once again, it's about income and wealth inequality, right? People want wall. They want a wall. You want a fucking wall, right? You're seeing militarized police. Look at the pictures in France. Look at the pictures. Look, what, look at the equipment the police are wearing against the people. Fucking football shoulder pads and, and, and helmets and... They got three guns in case they drop two of them against people in their in their t-shirts, vests, yellow vests, right? France is about to maybe oust fucking what's his name? Marina, what's his the, the president of France? I wrote it down. I forgot his name. Emmanuel Marcone. Marcone. Emmanuel Marcone is a chump. He's a, a neoliberal, an appointee. Right? See, it's not just America. What's going on all over the place, right? 
But the French have a history of taking to the street. But it's becoming ineffectual, which is what I, what I believe is the only solution, which is a, a passive resistance movement of sorts call for demilitarization of, of militaries across the, you know, now in the West, all, all across the West, the U.S. military to um, lay down your arms, point them at the oligarchy, right? Defund, right? <laughs> ah, it's good to be alive, man. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> tell you man poison is you get poison food poison you fucking you feel like you're dying you know what it is you're like oh shit I'm dying <sighs> cracked rib I could walk I'm alright might not be cracked if, right if I'm walking around right it might not be cracked but it hurts it hurts pretty bad I want to say one last thing about about walls I, I know I know this is this is rather painful for people who supported this president and this movement. I believe that a lot of the a lot of you folks are you're waking up for the first time and you're seeing that the problem is beyond one person, beyond the fixing of one president. I, I understand that. I try to be as I try to be as gentle as I can with it in pointing out the, the enemy, which is a corporate, corporate, corporate corporations that are controlling you, controlling the economy, right? right? And the way to get them is to tax them. There's no other way. You think that you're going to regulate them and you're going to, even if you sink their stock market. See the, see, the markets, I want to talk about that too, because the market does look like it's now teetering on a, on a flop, right? A week ago, for whatever reason, maybe it's because I said something. I don't fucking know. Uh, who am I? I'm just a guy in a fucking park, right? I don't know nothing. But... So I started saying, oh, maybe there's a crash coming. And now all of a sudden it's down the, over a thousand points. And the all the indexes are now sitting right on support. So if they break through these levels down, if you get another couple of days of down, you, you then you're starting to confirm a reversal. And then it goes into a bear market. That doesn't mean a crash. It just means that 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 it's not going to keep going up, right? And who lives off of that money? That's not you or me or or the people walking over here with their dogs. That's not who's who's profiting from that. It's a, it's a it's a one percent. The one percenters, the banks, the big corporations that pat each other on the back, right? So the market no longer has any any relation to the real economy it used to but it doesn't anymore because any profits the corporations accrue they take it and they 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 hide it they don't put it back into the economy trickle down no they take it put it in their pocket don't pay tax pay off the politicians pay the politician a million to stash a billion offshore right and that's why you see it's so out of control. That's why you see billionaires and billionaires rising. Right? You think that a billionaire gives a shit about the price of oil? <laughs> you think that the that that a guy like uh, fucking Warren Buffett, who's worth fifty-five billion dollars, do you think he gives a flying fuck about how much? How much it costs to fill his car up with gas or his entourage with gas to get from here to there, to here to the airport? Come on. They don't even know what you're talking about. They don't even know what you're talking about, right? So the yellow, the yellow vests, since that's what the topic of this video is, is the yellow vests under Emmanuel Marconi, or in opposition to Marcone, <laughs> Macaron, whatever the fuck is it, Macaroni, <laughs> president of France, right? 
in opposition to the neoliberal president of France, the French people, are standing up. What about you, America? What are you doing? <laughs> you waiting? You're gonna wait for you're gonna wait for the day to come, right? Something's gonna big is gonna happen, right? It's coming. Spartans, wake up. You're the change we're waiting for. You're the change I'm waiting for. Right? We're the change we've been waiting for. Right? We can make this happen in a passive resistant fashion. Right? U.S. boycott. Just boycott everything. Stay the fuck home. It's at the time of our choosing, as I've said. At the time of our choosing. How powerful is that? Let that fucking stock market go to shit. Who cares? Right? But it's not going to change anything because they're just going to... They don't pay... The, they don't reciprocate anyway. That, that, that money, they just... It's just money that they're not going to make. So it's not going to help you. The markets will crash and they'll... They'll cry. Oh, fucking... Oh, yeah. and they'll go to the go. They'll go to the politicians. No, oh, the fucking markets are crashing. Help us! Help us! Help us! And then they'll get the help they want because they pay off the politicians. They take your tax money and they pay off the politicians. That's what they always do. They've never had it so good, and now their market is going to crash and they're going to cry poverty. Watch, it always happens. So to the young people, right? I know it's hard to, 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 to accept that maybe some older folks know something a little bit more about stuff. But it's in everyone's best interest to, to understand the concept of income and wealth and equality and also velocity of money, which I stopped kind of talking about. But I'll, I'll end with that because that's a really good subject. And, and it's easy to understand what velocity of money really is. This is what it is. It's like, if I have, if I make $50,000 a year, right? And my lifestyle requires 40000 right? The likelihood is that I will spend all of the money that I make in the course of a year to A, sustain myself, and B, to have some fun or make an investment or take a vacation, right? That's a very, very good velocity of money. The money comes in and it, was, it, it moves through the economy because I'm, as I'm making it, I'm spending it, right? But where billionaires, billionaires, guys who have $10 billion, they don't need $10 billion to live. All they need is maybe, you know, they probably need more than the 50 grand that you or I would need. They probably need maybe a half a million, right? To pay their taxes and pay their bills and their traveling, even a little more. But there's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and piles and piles and piles of money that sit and do nothing. And that's a low velocity of money. Although the money exists in the theoretically <coughs> exists in the economy <coughs> it never hits the economy so velocity of money is very low uh, Chris Chris Hedges talks about that ex extensively he does a better job at it than me but in understanding that so when you have this <coughs> su supreme transfer of wealth to the top you have very low velocity of money and what you want to do is you want to what you want to do is you want to bring that back down to you want to you want to bring it back down to size you got to chop the legs out of these billionaires that's what's killing the country that's what's doing it right and there's no better way to do it than an all out boycott just just stop what you're doing all at once if 50 million people stop what they're doing the oligarchy comes to their knees and they say, well, how can we help you? What's going on here? Right? And we have our demands. You have, to, you, have to, you have to stop these corporations from stealing our treasure. Taking the treasure from us and putting it in their own pocket and dumping it offshore or 
or wherever, giving themselves billion dollar ta billion dollar bonuses. Right? That's what's going on. My name is Marcus Scott, you reporting.